수저 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 차바 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 따라바또 아라가또 하라 차라 This dude that is in the bunk next to mine is from Russia, but he lives in Japan because that's where he runs his Belgian waffle shop. If I sat down and I tried to make up some weird shit, I would not have come up with that. The truth is just stranger. He gave me this cool Japanese rag, which I wear on my head. Uh, I couldn't live in that box, that little box anymore. I just, eh, it was awful. So for two extra dollars, you know, thing, they got a rooftop pool, they got a great thing downstairs. I love it here. I'm very happy here. It's wonderful. Today's show is sponsored by Eddie De Silva, Ian Hirsch. Ching, Aaron Cole, Marius Christensen, and my amazing ability to befriend everyone from everywhere. Now where were we? Oh yes, sharing my life with you on the internet. Six a.m. sunrise. Headed to see Marie by motorbike. Is it pretty far? Three hundred and twenty-five k, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right around there. Excited and a little scared. Two days ago, I rode over from the coast, and it was absolutely horrifying. The Czechoslovakian-born writer Milan Kundera captured it best in his 1995 book titled *Slowness*, when he wrote, "The man hunched over his motorcycle can focus only on the present instant of his flight." He's caught in a fragment of time, cut off from both the past and the future. He is wretched from the continuity of time. He is outside time. In other words, he is in the state of ecstasy. In that state, he is unaware of his age, his wife, his children, his worries, and so he has no fear. Because the source of fear is in the future, and a person freed of the future has nothing to fear. The speed I'm traveling at is inconsequential. The pure vulnerability, the frailty of our human existence is the key. It is sufficient to say that if anything had gone wrong, a discarded soda can on the road, a sleepy or drunk driver, a meandering cow, a flat tire, a misjudgment of oncoming traffic, anything at all would have meant death, but also freedom from the future. It is in this space, this riding that razor blade of an edge. Every day we could die, but rarely are we confronted by it so thoroughly than when you're on a motorcycle on the highways of Cambodia. The Cambodian countryside is a blur of moments that my brain has turned into an unholy smear. The unfolding landscape is compressed into motifs that leave me less and less time to dwell on anything. I see the country floating past me like a dream. I feel the air, the stink of it. By 7.40 a.m. it was warm. By 8.30 it was hot. By 10 it was really hot. By 11 it was really, really, really hot. Note to self. Be better at describing heat. At around 12.30 I stopped at a roadside market. It wasn't much more than a tent, a couple pots and pans, over an open fire. People walked around in what seemed like pajamas, bits of trash everywhere. This is the place where the food is probably the freshest. The back alley Martha Stewart kitchens of Cambodia. Not a word of English was spoken. I just pointed to my mouth and pointed to my stomach and they nodded their head. The lady put a little rice in a bowl, cut up a cucumber, and then pointed to various pots with meat in them. I chose the teriyaki chicken looking thing, but it could have been a dog. I don't know. It didn't taste like chicken. It wasn't really beef either, but it was lathered with enough special sauce that it didn't really matter. I sat there eating the mystery roadside meat, thinking to myself, I'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? While two women wearing what could only be described as pajamas cut up oranges? I don't know, what, what is that? I guess they're like oranges? Peppers? I, I have no idea. I have no idea what they're cutting up. It was good though. They gave me a cup full of ice, which I didn't really trust, so I drank my bottled water. But I dumped the ice water all over my body, which felt perfect. amazing. Look at this cube of ice. Absolutely amazing. I paid the nice man a dollar for his home cooked meal and got back on that red devil maker of a motorcycle for a quick one hour burn to see him reap. Later that evening, I went to dinner with my friend Amanda, who you may remember from the mini golf episode. And we're having a dinner at this little outdoor cafe when a man who was a W amputee drives up with his little bookmobile. And the bookmobile is like a scooter with a bunch of books on the back of it. And he has all these signs hanging around that basically say, I'm trying to raise money for my 35 kids to go to school. 
I'm a double amputee, I stepped in a landmine, I'm not begging, I'm trying to work. So I was kinda like, well, 35 kids? I don't have any good books about Cambodia, maybe this guy has good books about Cambodia. And I find this book called, The Curse of Cambodia, A Modern History of What's Wrong with This Country. Let me tell you something, this is a very heavy book. And by heavy, I mean it's like 300 pages of everything that you could possibly do to mess things up is what they did. Environmentally, educationally, militarily, justice-a-lily, justice-a-lily. That's not a word, but it should be. It is a horrible book to read, especially if you're in the country that you're reading about. It just makes you just, yeah, blah, I, yeah, yeah. Well, one thing that was interesting was that Ron Abney is all over this thing. Was, was Lee Dieter's dad who set up the orphanage thing. Apparently, he was also the center of a 1994 FBI investigation because he was an American that caught some shrapnel at a government protest. And when the FBI starts investigating shit, they get to the bottom of shit. And what they found was that the Prime Minister, who is actually still currently the Prime Minister of this country, had something to do with it. Or at least his bodyguards had knowledge of the people who threw the grenade because there were photographs of the people who threw the grenades running through his line of bodyguards that were out in front of his house. And the line of bodyguards wouldn't let anyone else through. When the shit hit the fan and everybody started running. So... Corruption. Crazy, right? But it was kind of interesting to read about Lead Eater's dad in a book about Cambodia's corruption. Right? I didn't even know that about Ron Abney. I was just reading a book that a double amputee sold me in Cambodia. Crazy, right? After that, Amanda and I went to a club. I was taller than everyone there. When we walked out of the club, it was New Year's. Cambodian New Year's. They have this very interesting tradition where they throw baby powder at you and spray you with water. I'm not making this up. Here's a montage of that insanity in three, two, one. I'm so red. My eyes are red. White. <laughs> I don't even White. understand. White, red. What Everything. The f best night ever. Basically. Oh, best night ever. Cambodian New Year. Who knew? Holy Who knew? shit. The best. I felt like a target. I was the tallest fucker there by you far. You totally were, and I was the second tallest. And we basically were targets. <laughs> yeah, it was. Everyone great. wanted to wish us a happy New Year with powder. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. Covered in baby powder, with eyes on fire, I went home, I took a shower, and I climbed into my shitbox of a room. Yep, that's what I did. 
Amanda had to catch an early bus, to catch an early plane, to disappear. So I actually never saw her again. I didn't get to do like that goodbye moment. I was asleep. Here's the Australia show. Stand-up comedy. It's what I do. And if you want to help me out on my adventure, boom, there's that. I love you, my little lemon drops. Do join us tomorrow when we continue. Oh, I am. Part work. Monday through Friday. Or every important work Monday through Friday. That's how we're doing it now. Brr.